Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and uh, we are in for a special mission to the moon today. Now, I have often said that the internal vehicle views really don't help on most space missions. In fact, I find them to be a hindrance, which is why I'm going to try taking this entire rocket to the moon and landing with it. Now you'll notice that instead of the standard landing, uh, you know, spacecraft command pod, I am in fact using the aircraft cockpit. This because it gives us a lot more visibility. Also, um, you see, I'm picking up a bunch of spin because I really thought more about the lander stage rather than the launch stage. So uh, we're just going to time accelerate through. I hope you don't get seasick from this, but I tried my best to control this spin and failed miserably. Again, this is what happens when you don't get your struts lined up correctly. The torque from external motors pushes against the um, the center and causes the whole thing to rotate. Which it causes a big issue. So yeah, dumped uh, one of my, that's me dumping the first stage. I've now got a core stage, which is still pushing me into orbit. You heard the Sepatrons fire. So again, more time accelerating so that you don't have to sit through and watch this. We get a good way up to uh, orbital velocity and then we just keep, we, we're just uh, going to try to get as fast as we can. We're going to we see we've uh, positioned the moon. We purposely waited until the moon was in position so that I could just go straight into my lunar transfer maneuver. Now uh, we're about to run out of the main stage here. You can see that we're getting low on fuel. Oh no, you can't see that. But there we go. Yes, we've run out of fuel. We're moving. We aren't moving fast enough to get to the moon. So yeah, I uh, make a mistake there. When I jettison the stage, I uh, immediately retro thrust, which is not what I intend to do. So you may not have seen this in the other, in the external view, but the upper stage is actually powered by aero spikes, which are pointing backwards. So from this point on, I have to thrust in the reverse direction to where I want to go. Now, there is a reason for this. It is a very good reason. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'm sure you can guess that I want to be able to see the ground when I'm landing. So I flipped everything around and made the command pod look downwards uh, with respect to the rest of the spacecraft. So when I'm coming down, I'll be able to see my own shadow. I'll be able to decide whether I want to land on a specific location. It makes it vastly more functional. That was one of the, that's one of the things like the lunar uh, excursion module. Its windows were angled downwards so that the, pilots could see the ground. It wasn't like the command module or the space shuttle or anything where the windows shoot forwards. Anyway, so I'm what I'm doing now is I'm burning off into my lunar uh, intercept trajectory and I'm trying to guess. And what I'm doing is I'm basically firing the rockets, then I'm taking a screenshot, plugging the values into an external, um, basically I'm plugging them to a calculator, and trying to figure out if I'm going the right distance. What I'm trying to do is get my peri key, or sorry, my apple key, right up just beyond the lunar orbit so the moon will catch me. And you see that I flipped around because I actually overdid it. Uh, I'm just going to keep doing this. I'm not sure how many times I did it. I'm doing this in retrospect because it was a lot of concentration to try and do this. We, you can see the moon there, flying towards the moon. I'll just try and keep that in sight. As you see, we're gonna. Are we? How are we gonna do it? Oh, oh yeah. I guess we're falling towards the moon now. No. Or are we gonna flip around the moon? Oh yeah, we've kind of come around the moon a little now. And I'm making a small adjustment because after looking at the numbers, I think what I can do is I can take the angle from the artificial horizon, and that is showing me that I'm coming down a little too steeply and may hit the the lunar surface. So again, I start. I burnt the wrong way initially because this thing is backwards. Um, but coming back down, I you see I've moved the position of that uh, node, so I think I'll miss the moon now. You see, also I'm auto saving all, not on my uh, quick saving all the time, but I didn't actually need it at any point. It was just a force of habit that made me uh, quick save all the time. So down to four hundred meters. We're just trying to get. I'm just going to turn around and keep the thing in view. I'm looking for when I hit um, Perimoon so that I can burn and try to circularize my orbit, get myself captured, and therefore pick a landing site. Watching the needle there on my 
vertical velocity and it flips so now I get a burn and guesstimate what my velocity should be based upon altitude and you know my experience I've got a table full of numbers next to me so I can figure out the orbital velocity that I need on capture so that's what I'm gonna use there we go so now tag in time accelerate I'm doing a time acceleration in the video the full un unedited video without the time acceleration is about half an hour be happy to upload that but uh, it's kind of boring so I'm just skipping over a lot of this stuff in the video I needed a lot of downtime because I was trying to plug values into the the calculator in, in real time more or less oh, there we go so we're now trying to slow my orbit down bring my self down I see there's a there's a good landing site let's see if I can get it in that crater so I'm just adjusting and yeah I want to basically kill my velocity but not too much how are we doing um, 173 I'm totally gonna just gauge this again no edits in this okay I think I'm gonna miss it just a little so maybe Oh, there's something flickering on the side of that crater there. Oh, I bet you that's... Um, that'll be the crater with the arch. So I'm trying to figure out which way I should fire to keep bring me closer to the middle of the crater. I mean, it, since, I'm try, since I'm trying to land on the moon, I've, I've given myself a huge fuel tanks. I don't know if you saw. These are the the large, or the second largest fuel tanks in the game, and there's three of them with aero spikes attached to them. Uh, one of the nice things is because everything's pointing forward, so there's the landing gear coming out. So we're now just going to more or less fall towards the surface and basically adjust my velocity. And this is the, this is the landing that's going to happen live. Oh dear. So now we're like 25 kilometers up and dropping at quite a, quite a fast speed. So I want to bleed off a bit of that. I am not going to suicide burn this. I have so much fuel, it is not funny. I'm sure if I hit the moon at this speed, I would make a very big fireball. I'm just uh, it, It's kind of hard concentrating on moving the cockpit around and moving the... Um, and controlling the aircraft, the spacecraft, at the same time. We're 15 kilometers up, still trying to reduce our velocity slowly, but not so slowly that we uh, end up crashing into the surface. I'm just going to be more or less conservative and kind of slide down without uh, on a continuous burn here. Very low burn rate. Now, we have the radar alt altimeter there, you can see. It's sitting above the altimeter there. The, the regular altimeter, which, of course... <laughs> One, that's a reference to sea level, and on aircraft that's set based on atmospheric pressure, but uh, on the moon there's no atmospheric pressure, so one wonders what they are in fact reading. But never mind, we're going to use the radar one once we get in really close. We're down below six kilometers relative to average sea level, and my vertical velocity is now below, below like 100 meters per second. Down to below four kilometers. Three and a half. Okay, we're maybe going slowing down a little too much. Let's. Uh, we want to slow down more. I mean, two and a half kilometers, and I see the radar altimeter kick in, so we know we have a good lock on the surface. The question is just to bring my velocity down to zero when I hit zero. Oh my goodness. Yeah, this is even this is even stressful watching this in real time. When I we did this again, my heart started beating cuz I hadn't used any saves and this was, you know, first time I'd really tried this. So, I was really desperate not to mess things up. So now below a kilometer, we really want to arrest our velocity sufficiently that we can see where we're going. Um now, again, you'll notice I've picked the, the bright side of the moon. I picked a crater on the, the lit side of the moon purposely so I can um, see the shadow when I get in really close because moving my eyes around all these different gauges becomes quite a difficult problem. We're picking up some really awesome details. And I think I saw the shadow for a second, but the rendering of the shadow is sometimes questionable. 
This is looking really nice. I have the RCS system turned on as well. Oh, there we have. We have the good shadow there. So now it's just a question of aiming for the right piece of ground and making sure I'm not slipping too fast sideways. And we'll just cut the engines. Bang! <laughs> the eagle has landed. The eagle has in fact landed, yes. And um, unfortunately to get out we can't... I don't think there's a way to get out from inside uh, the cockpit view, so I, I have to actually break for a moment and come out. And yeah, you'll notice that we had uh, Charlie Kerman here, my second favourite pilot and uh, spaceship designer. So yep, he can in fact get out of this vehicle, and it does look a little weird. We don't have a ladder. But uh, we're going to skip over most of the boring EVA footage. It turns out that we were, in fact, close to the, the arch. But uh, he can, from here... Well, he uses the RCS, but in a pinch, he can actually jump in and get on board. Anyway, it's time to head home. So, normally, we would burn into a uh, an orbit, you know, our lateral orbit. And again, we're going to have to point in the opposite direction to the one we go. Lift off just happens really fast. This thing has a lot of thrust when I need it. I'm not even running them at 100% thrust. But we're just going to burn up to about 550 meters per second. And then uh, once, we, we're th once we get up to that speed, the plan is that we will coast to Apple Moon and then circularize the orbit. using Again, using my table of numbers that I have sitting here conveniently. So there we go. Burn off. Accelerate around to uh, where we go. I'm, I'm not using the game, I'm using the game time acceleration, but I'm combining it with the video acceleration because I didn't really use high rates of acceleration, simply because I didn't want to overshoot. And you see the, um, there we go. So there's the, there is our thing. And you see I made a mistake there. I began, I turned around to thrust prograde uh, and then realized, no wait, the rockets are pointing the wrong direction. So yeah, bring the velocity up again to circularize the orbit. And once we're in a circular orbit, we'll figure out which way we actually need to burn to get home. So uh, let's look around. What we want to do is find out where the Earth is. Or sorry, where Kerbin is. Oh, there it is there. So Kerbin is more or less above us. We are going to be coming around. We want to burn on the backside. Let's stow the landing gear. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> So I think now that we've got around there, we're in a pretty good position. We're just going to set ourselves up and burn retrograde to just under escape velocity, which will be about 760, 770 meters per second. We don't want to do too much because we're going to wait until we're in. We've got so much fuel that we can afford to wait until we're actually in uh, Kerbin's sphere of influence before we uh, actually make our final descent adjustment. So now uh, let us admire the moon as we leave it in our... It's, it's a lot nicer flying to the moon when we have such a nice uh, space can of view from our, our windows. Those capsules are just like sardine cans and there's so little to see. Spam in a can, isn't that what they, the astronauts used to say when they talked about the windows? On their tiny little uh, mercury capsules. There we go. There's the moon and there's the planet Kerbin that we're flying away from. We're, what we want to do is get into Kerbin's sphere of influence, and then once we're there, we can, in fact, adjust our orbit, take another look. And there we go. So what, the reason we know that we changed sphere of influence is the altitude changed from like a few thousand or thousand kilometers to like 11,000. So now I'm going to basically make a burn to slow my lateral velocity so that I end up arriving at the atmosphere. I, I don't want to kill all the atmosphere, the lateral velocity, because then I can come down too quickly. And, you know, you never know. Maybe one of these days we'll have a, have a re-entry physics enabled. But that's us. You know, hopefully, if we're hoping that we actually get close to the planet. If not, we can come around for another pass, assuming we don't slam into the moon. Yep, this is looking good. So we'll wait until we're absolutely inside the atmosphere before we drop everything. That shouldn't be too hard. There we go. We have atmospheric in interface. Going to jettison thing this things these uh, engines, 
And uh, I actually fired up the RCS and I wanted to reverse so I could see them, but then I realized I messed it up. So, uh, yeah, so much for that. I wanted to see them kind of flying down with me. But we're coming down relatively steeply still. Regardless, let's fire up the, the... We've jettisoned the stuff and we've dropped our parachute out. Six kilometers up. We're coming down quickly, but uh, hopefully that parachute will not break off when we get to 500 meters. Um, if you are building a capsule like this, be careful where you attach the parachute to the cockpit because in some places it apparently is weaker than others and will snap off. I found that I can stick it just up behind the canopy and I'll, it'll not only stick on, but it'll also keep me pointed in the right direction. There we go. Let's, uh, let's turn this around if we, so we can see the debris falling. I'm not sure what that is, whether that or that's rocket motors or whether that's the, the RCS stage. Oh, did stuff survive? Well, never mind. That's us. A successful mission. Now, I know there was somebody that asked me, could I do such a thing? Could I do an IVA-only mission to Minmus and the Moon in the same mission? And maybe, but right now, that was a hard enough, uh, hard enough job just going to the Moon, and the Moon is a lot easier to see. If you look right ahead there, you can, in fact, see Minmus. Maybe I'll do it. If I do it, I will have to go to Minmus first, uh, and then the Moon, which... Um, that will be a future event, and it will be a lot harder. I am Scott Manley. It has been a pleasure. Fly safe.